Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker, psychotherapist, specializing in grief and loss. Talk about Simply the Best. Our next guest is, is Simply the Best. But first, we're going to be talking about his Emmy Awards experience. Emmy Awards are tonight, uh, Corey. And what I thought was quite interesting, you know, with all virtual TV, the whole thing's being done virtual. Uh, if you look through the list of nominations, which I don't think many people know who's <laughs> even nominated these days, but I did search that today. And it's interesting. It's being it's being uh, hosted by ABC, you know, one of the big okay. three, ABC, NBC, right. C- CBS. Hardly any of the nominations are on the big three. It's all nowadays Netflix and HBO right, right, right. and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. And our world is changing in, in terms of our viewing habits. Our world is changing in so many ways, Matt. So <laughs> many ways. I am not a big uh, award winner fan i don't watch them very mm-hmm. much either uh, but uh you know sometimes i i think it's really cool that our guest has been nominated that kind of m- makes me feel like i'm i'm cool because i know someone <laughs> who was nominated for an emmy i've decided gamut i know you so just get ready for that okay <laughs> so I'm all good with that okay speaking of which it is it gives me my great pleasure gavin fernandez is a film mixer working out of montreal for clients like hbo netflix nbc cbs and many local production companies. In 2017, he was nominated for an Emmy Award for his work on HBO's Big Little Lies. Sound familiar? A lot of people know that because it was very well-known, uh, great show. He's been nominated for dozens of giant screen and Canadian screen screen awards, Jenny's, Gemini's, Jimo, and Quebec Film Awards, including wins for Bone Cop, Bad Cop in 2007, Volcanoes of the Deep Sea. I could give you a long list of many, many things. The truth is, uh, then we'll not be able to interview you. So I'm going to just say, he's really cool. He's really uh, famous. He's done a lot of great things. But more importantly, in his spare time, he does spend a lot of time with his kids and volunteering. And he's recently started the Teresa Deller Community Foundation. And that's in honor of his late wife, my colleague, my friend, Teresa Deller. Gavin, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. I don't think there's anything left to say. Really, and then next week, yeah. <laughs> and we don't, yeah, and we don't say really, really good we, we, in the industry. We just say we got, we got, I got really, really lucky. We always, we always joke. Say, if you get a nomination, you say, well, even the. Even the blind rat finds the cheese once in a while. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're very, and I should have added humble to the humble list. Indeed. Okay, here's the thing, Gavin. What the heck is a re-recording mixer? Re-recording mixer. So it's, it's a term that came about. Yeah, so originally sound. Uh, in fact, oh, since the beginning of sound, which is around 1926, uh, the reference is the Al Jolson movie, um, was was that um, it's always got to be recorded on a separate medium. And then it's got to be, you know, at first it was recorded and then added back to the film when the film was finished. Now it's, take, it's, it's, it's recorded on a separate medium and enhanced incredibly, obviously, with the soundtracks that we have. Um, and so uh, the different elements that can be used to enhance it are obviously music and the music might come as you know different forms of music we have score which comes from a composer we might have source music that's getting played you know like songs from bands and pop music that's being played either in the show so like it's coming out of a radio or it's being used as a you know over the music montage or as a as a as an enhancement almost like a score piece and then there's there's sound effects and foley which is like sound effects that are live or actually performed live like footsteps and and the you know the gestures of everyone at the table, the cups down on the table, and the, the people drinking and the people walking by, and then there's um, there's there's ambient tracks, so the sound of the birds, the sounds of the traffic, the sounds of the the ventilation, uh, and then even the dialogue itself. You can have extra sounds from the crowd added in that was re-recorded in the studio. You can have lines that were added in after the show was finished that were never recorded on set, but that the actor had to come back in and add in, which helped tie the storyline together. And then you've got the original dialogue that was recorded on the set and that had to be cleaned up and enhanced so that it's, you know, you can hear every word and every syllable. And so that's my job. My job is to take this, this mountain of stuff and then sort of to, to, to knit it back into a coherent thing following the, the, the wishes of the director uh, and the producer 
to to make it into something that they want it to be. So that's my job is to sift through it all. And sometimes everything plays together. Sometimes we have to make choices and, and okay, we're going to favor the sound effects during the explosion, but we're going to favor the music during the love scene. And uh, those are the choices that get made. You're listening to Life yeah. Unrehearsed here with Matt and Corey, and we're talking to Gavin Fernandez. He's a re-recording mixer, a Montrealer, proud Montrealer. And Gavin, um, I have to add, Corey, uh, Gavin has such a sense of humor. He, he, we were texting earlier on today, and he, and as you know, we're not allowed to have guests in studio, um, so there's a lot of phoning guests these days. And so he says, I'm going to be well-dressed for the <laughs> interview. So doesn't he, 30 seconds before we go on air, Gavin is sporting a beautiful bow tie and sport jacket and looking just swell, Gavin. So you are a man of your word as well. Well, dressing oh, yeah. up for the interview. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you know, you're taking a very techie type industry, sort of turning it uh, into a human and humorous um, perspective. Now, you graduated university. I'm amazed at this, uh, uh, Gavin, that you, it was biochemistry and pharmacology. Not amazed that you graduated from university, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> you are a Loyola boy yeah, after all, right? Yeah, Matt and I have known each other since high school. Right? That, that's right. Yeah. But, you know, here you go from biochemistry and pharmacology, and how did you get started in the, in the sound mixing world? Uh, really a pastime that turned into a career. Um, while I was doing the biochemistry and all, the Concordia had a studio in the, in the hall building, and I started volunteering there. And I'd been interested in sound because I'd played in bands in CJEP and I'd done sound for, you know, I got involved with the Beckett Players and Montreal Communities in Concert, which is another West Island group. And it was just sort of this, just it was just something to to add on to my, my CV. And I started getting re- interested in the electronics. And then one of the gentlemen who was there who had graduated, he, was, uh, he had finished uh, his electrical engineering degree, he had a company building studios and he had seen some of the electronics work I'd done. He said, oh, I need some help. You want to help me out on this project? And while I was there doing that, one of the, cl- the, the owners called and said, said oh, uh, you know, he says, is your boss around because I have this client and needs something done? And, and I said, well, he's not here, but I can do it for you. And so, <laughs> so he did. And he ended up offering the job. A lot of it was being in the know before the opportunity presented itself and then being able to do it when the opportunity. So there is a lot, you know, when I, I, was, I was joking and saying that, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky, a lot of the time, a lot of things have to transpire for you to get from, from A to Z. And, and I was lucky enough to be in the room when a lot of, you know, these opportunities came up and then able to deliver once I was sitting in the chair. But it's, uh, it was definitely a hobby. And it's, it's something, you know, when I, when I teach or when I give talks or, you know, either Concordia or, you know, the music technique or these, these trade schools uh, in sound, I'll, I'll often say to people, I said, I said, you know, it, you know, it's a privilege to be able to. How many people get to go to work and you're, you're doing your hobby for your whole, you know, like to love your job, is such a such an honor and such a privilege. There's so, few, you know, and a lot of people have to punch the clock, and and it never seems like that, you know, um, to the detriment of sometimes. It's like it's like it's like. Oh yeah, I was supposed to be home an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, and I believe that your passion for the work really helps, really helps, really contributes to why the success of your work, which leads me into everyone's got to hear some story about the Emmys and how that transpired. We got to go to traffic, but when we come back, you're going to tell us that story. There so we'll sure. see you on the other end, other side of the traffic. Life unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downtown sizing and seniors residences. Welcome back. You're listening to Life with Corey Sirota, along with my co-host, Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking to re-recording mixer Gavin Fernandez. And he's not just re-recording mixer. He's re-recording mixer who was nominated for an Emmy. So, <laughs> so we want to hear about it, Gavin. This was uh, for Big Little Lies. Yep. And yep. Uh, tell us what happened. So the, the first, first, actually, little funny bit about it was when we'd finished Big Little Lies, um, it was a very different approach to, to sound. There was, there was parts of which were incredibly minimalist and uh, parts of which are, are, you know, were, were, were a lot more uh, um, sculpted, if, if you will. Um, and so we're going up against, you know, sometimes not necessarily in the, um, the limited series category, which we are in, but the, the level of the shows, you know, you're going up against Game, Game of Thrones and, and, and you know, uh, uh, some friends who actually work on uh, *Handmaid's Tale*, wow. and they're very crafted, uh, you know, soundtracks. 
And so we're, we, you know, we finished the show and we were all very proud of it, but we were, we were sort of like, well, we'll never get nominations for this. And then we did get a nomination. And we're like, okay, we have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> just the fact that it was like, we, we didn't think it was going to happen. Um, and then also, you know, we work on these shows with, with Jean-Marc Valley and he, he's just, he's just a genius. He's a think outside the box, follow his instincts kind of guy, um, which sometimes is, is tough to do. But such a blessing to be, you know, to be with uh, an artist or an craftsman of that, of that level and of talent. And he does only his own, you know, uh, picture editing, and so he's he's already given us a great template as to what he wants. You know, he's already worked the sound in the rough mix to roughly give an idea of what he he's looking for. So it's really quite amazing. Um, so the story, the, I think you guys want the story of the trip, um, and that I have to just give one shout out to Louis Geniac, who's the co mixer who. Sort of, uh, he said. He said, "Only well, you take the, you take the HBO free trip sort of thing because uh, Teresa was coming with me, um, and he made other arrangements to get there and to stay in it." You know. um, so they they pay the they pay the the way for it. So the the morning before the Emmys, the, the limousine shows up at our house in Dollard, and they pick us up and drive us to the first class lounge at, you know, at the airport. And we take business class, of which nine of the 11 seats are members of our team. <laughs> they were, uh, the show was up for 18 nominations, they had 18 nominations in one year, which is just almost unheard of. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we, we get there, and then there's another, with this part we found strange, there was another eight limousines. <laughs> <laughs> seven limousines. And we're, going, we're all going to the same hotel. They put us up at the Beverly Hills Four Seasons. Uh, with a per diem on the room, and um, so we, you know, we went out for dinner, or a nice dinner. Uh, myself and my, uh, actually, Teresa didn't come, and then um, we we met with some friends from Los Angeles, and then the next day, uh, uh, she, like I, as a gift to her, we I, we, we had her the, her hair and makeup done at the, at the hotel by by you know some professional artists, makeup artists, and all this, and then. The, the, you know, another party, there was a cocktail for just the HBO uh, nominees on the, you know, at the hotel at the, at the Four Seasons, and then a shuttle bus that took us down to the Kodak Theater, and we had the, the ceremony. We were hosted by Tom Hanks, um, and I told Matt this story, and so the story is uh, Tom Hanks gets out there, and, you know, a big round of applause, and, and he says, every one of you should be proud. He says, because you Every single one of you represents the most important people. And then he sort of pauses for a second and goes to basically the other people in this room because none of us know <laughs> right. what to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was, and it, was, it was really cute. And, you know, we got to meet um, met Jane Lynch at the standing waiting for an elevator and, and chatted with her. Um, it, was, it was a surreal moment for, for a Canadian you know, I mean, we work on these great shows, but we don't live in that life sort of thing. And so it was really quite a surreal moment, but it was so uh, appreciated and so much, yes. uh, yeah. you know, such a magical thing. Magical is right. You're listening to Life on Rehearse with Matt and Corey talking to Gavin Fernandez, re-recording mixer, who is just recounting his Emmy Award experience. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you, you won the award, mm. but just the experience itself, you are a winner, Gavin. Now, we're running out of time already because there was such an oh, interesting yeah. story, but we'd be remiss, Gavin, to talk about some of the initiatives that are ongoing about uh, your late wife, the wonderful uh, Teresa Deller, um, the West Island Palliative Care Residence, was just recently renamed after Teresa, called the Teresa Deller uh, Palliative Care Residence. And congratulations on that. She was the co-founder after all. But I, we have a, a minute or two to talk about the Teresa Deller Community Foundation. Can you tell us about that, Gavin? By all means. By all means. So the residence has been up and running since 2002, and they have their own foundation, which has also been rebranded the Teresa Deller Palliative Care Foundation, um, and their, their avenues of revenue and all that. Um, but Teresa used to do a lot more stuff. So she would use her networking to help the poor, to help the, to, to, to work with refugees, to do it. And there, it was almost effortless for her. I mean, it was time consuming, but, but, you know, just she put it, she put it out there that we need 40 volunteers to help, uh, to help with the Haitian refugees arriving after the earthquake. And she had 60 names. <laughs> and also, <laughs> That's Teresa. Yeah. yeah. 
and then we're doing shifts uh, at the at the hotel, receiving the the people at the airport. And you know, same thing. She hears that in in her in her last year, you know, um, in between two rounds of chemo, uh, she hears that the old brewery mission needs socks, and all of a sudden. We're we're renting a cube truck to drive down three thousand pairs of socks and underwear plus donations <laughs> to to the old brewery mission, mm-hmm. and so we realized that there was a need for doing stuff that was separate from the palliative care, and it was definitely it was you know we discussed it with them, and and if it was too similar in a cause, it would just sort of be left pocket, right pocket. Whereas this has a separate mandate to work with uh, with community groups, so we're going to look you know we're going to be outreaching to the municipalities in the West Island to start and Montreal in general. And then also sort of an educational uh, mandate to help with possibly with palliative care on a national level, um, but all sorts of things. So we've started already, uh, this is already set in place, uh, two social work uh, um, scholarships, one at McGill, one at University of Montréal, uh, in conjunction with the residents, which did two scholarships in nursing at those same two institutions. Nice. All, all four in her name, and there's, there's a lot more stuff coming. We Incredible. have uh, some announcements to make. We're, we've been sort of been stalled by the COVID thing and mm-hmm. yeah, tax, no, no getting kidding. our tax numbers, like everybody else. Well, Gavin, we want to thank you and, and all that you do, and you're going to hear a lot more about the Teresa Deller Community Foundation updates. Thanks for spending a little time your Sunday with us. Thank you so much for having me on. You guys are amazing. All right, Thanks Gavin. so much, Gavin. Corey, what do we got next week? Next week, we're going to hear an inspirational story of Jenny Liss, who became a widow at a relatively young age, actually at 43. She started a podcast called The Widowed Parent Podcast to share her experience, and she's going to deliver a very thought-provoking, insightful interview for us um, which to tell you a little bit more about that podcast that's followed by thousands and we're also going to have the president of the muhc foundation julie kenville who will be joining us so thank you for listening many thanks to our technical producer david simon and you want to stay on with us because we have dave kaufman who's going to be anchoring coverage of health minister christian dubay's press conference that's coming up right after the news